In this video, I'm talking about how hearing aid validation is critical to your success with hearing aids. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and Founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to make sure you receive a notification every time I release a new video. Now you guys constantly hear me talking about real ear measurement as a form of hearing aid verification to ensure that your hearing aids are programmed correctly to your hearing loss prescription. Validation is necessary to ensure that you're actually receiving real world benefit with hearing aids. And even though verification, like real ear measurement, isn't occurring very often, at least validation is happening more often. This pie chart is from Market Track 8, which looks at hearing aid industry data. Based on a survey of 787 subjects, it indicates that approximately 69% of these subjects reported that their hearing care provider validated their hearing aid fitting. Now, just to be clear, hearing aid validation does not mean that your hearing care provider is asking you, how does that sound during your initial hearing aid fitting appointment? Hearing aid validation should be a measurable outcome. Measurable validation is obtained by a pre and post outcome measure, typically in the form of a questionnaire. And there are three different types of validation measures that I like to use inside of my clinic. And the first one is the client oriented scale of improvement, otherwise known as the COSI. The COSI is an excellent way to evaluate improvement due to hearing aids. You essentially identify key areas that you want to hear better in at the beginning of your treatment with hearing aids. And then you score your perceived improvement upon the completion of your fitting period. There are a number of factors that go into how you will rank your degree of change with hearing aids, but in general, you should be in the better categories and not in the worse or no difference categories. Your final hearing ability should also be in the higher levels of satisfaction. If you are not ranking high in these categories, there is a good chance either your expectations are unrealistic, you are in the wrong level of hearing aid technology based on your needs, or your hearing aids were not fit and programmed properly to your hearing loss prescription. The next form of validation is the abbreviated profile of hearing aid benefit, otherwise known as the APHAB. The APHAB uses 24 predetermined questions, each on a seven point Likert scale. The scale ranges from never to always. It evaluates four different categories of performance, including ease of communication, reverberation, background noise, and aversiveness. The questionnaire is to be completed once before the hearing aid treatment and again after completion of a hearing aid fitting period to compare results before treatment and after treatment. In terms of validation questionnaires, the APHAB is an absolute stud, especially for nerds like me who love comparing outcome scores to norms. You can download these questionnaires in paper format, but the excitement comes when you use the scoring software. In the scoring software, you can compare untreated scores to your treated scores. You can also compare your outcomes with the norms of other hearing aid users for each of the four subcategories. If you want to see a highly detailed analysis of your improvement with hearing aids, the APHAB is the perfect validation questionnaire for you. And the last validation questionnaire that I like to use is the International Outcome Inventory for Hearing Aids, otherwise known as the IOIHA. This questionnaire is perfect for individuals who already have hearing aids and aren't performing well with them. It is a short seven item questionnaire that identifies how long a hearing aid user wears their hearing aids, along with other questions that identify how much success and satisfaction a user is having with their hearing aids. This can uncover specific areas that should be targeted for improvement, and it can also be completed after adjustment of the user's current hearing aids or after a fitting period with new hearing aids to determine how big the improvement is. Now I want to make sure that I'm really clear when I say this. Evaluating how well you're performing with your hearing aids should not be done in the form of how do you think you're doing with your hearing aids. There should be a very specific set of criteria that you are using to evaluate how well you're performing in the real world in a variety of different situations. Now I know I said that this video wasn't specifically for verification methods like real ear measurement, 
But when you do real ear measurement as a form of hearing aid verification, it gives you better scores on these validation measures, meaning that you get more benefit in the real world. That is proven by research. That being said, when you perform verification and validation together, not one or the other, but both of them together, then you know that you're going to be getting the maximum amount of benefit out of your hearing devices, meaning that you're going to actually get what you paid for and it actually reduces the amount of visits that you have to make to your hearing care professional so it saves you both time and money. So the next time that you get hearing aids, not only should you expect that they perform real ear measurement on you, you should also expect that they ask you to complete a validation questionnaire to ensure that you get the maximum amount of benefit with your hearing aids in the real world. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.